Greetings. In my last video, I talked about my latest efforts to restore my grandfather's Waltham pocket watch and the amplitude problem that I ran into. Here are the full amplitude results taken from my visual measurements in the six standard positions. They're very low numbers and they indicate a problem within the movement. I came up with suspected causes for the watch's low amplitude. And since then, I've gotten suggestions and feedback from my friend Mark from Australia, who's user Mercurial L2810, and another YouTube viewer, Bubba Smith, whose user name is MarsZGBLBL. <laughs> they basically said, nah, nothing doing. And they advised me to pursue entirely different suspects for the low amplitude. Mark suggested that I do a free oscillations test before anything else. This is a test that is isolates the balance assembly uh, and determines if it's contributing to the low amplitude. Uh, of all the drivetrain components, the balance assembly turns out to be the easiest one to isolate and test. If it isn't contributing to the low amplitude, you can cross that off your list and move on to other possible causes of low amplitude, knowing that the balance is okay. If it is contributing to the low amplitude, you should fix the problem there first and then retest. Here's how you do the test. You first remove the balance assembly, then remove the pallet fork or lever, and then remount the balance assembly so that the balance assembly is now isolated and doesn't interact with any other part in the movement. Then you manually turn the balance through the 180 degree mark. Then you release it and time how long it oscillates. If it's healthy, the balance should oscillate for at least one minute before coming to rest. My results? 36 seconds, which is only 60% of what it should be. That means there's something causing a serious power drop within the balance assembly. I first inspected the wheel and hairspring. The hairspring was flat and in the round but there was a slight in the round deformation at the innermost coil uh, near the arbor. I then examined the balance staff under the microscope, and here I found another more serious problem. The balance staff has a bent pivot. This will definitely rob the balance wheel of velocity and momentum. Mark theorized that I might have bent the pivot when I used my vintage duplex roller remover, because there was nothing keeping the staff removal punch completely uh, perpendicular to the wheel. And I was doing it by, by sight. There was nothing holding it in place as it would be for a, a staking set. Uh, I, I really wish I had taken time grapher measurements and done a more careful inventory of each part during disassembly. Uh, and this is a valuable lesson for me from this project and my Gruen watch project. Anyway, uh, I've now bought a Rex roller remover off of eBay, uh, so I expect to do better in the future. It turns out that straightening a pivot is not for the faint of heart. Uh, this is the first time in my watchmaker education, which is admittedly only a year old, where I've heard, yeah, don't even try it. Up until now, there's always been some tool or technique that while a challenge to master uh, would fix a problem or resolve an issue or you know, do the trick. Uh, not so with pivot straightening. Sykes sells the 30350 pivot straightener. Well, I had three people tell me the same joke in the space of two weeks, that it should actually be called the pivot breaker. But there's another problem with using the 30350 for this pivot. Balance staff pivots are constructed differently than wheel pivots. So it's not clear that the 30350 would be advisable to use on a balance staff anyway, even if it did produce very good results with wheel pivots. Now Mark pointed out that the 30350 has joules in one quarter of a hundredth of a millimeter increments, i.e. 0.0025 millimeters, and this can be very helpful when measuring pivot sizes. Uh, but anyway, long story short, straightening a bent pivot is fraught with peril. So, I used my staking set to remove the balance wheel from the staff and plan to buy a replacement balance staff. 
Now the staff disassembly went well. Uh, this was my first time ever de-staffing a balance. And I bumped into and learned some subtleties about the staking plate hole diameter selection versus the diameter of the staff being removed. Uh, I'll do it more gracefully in the future, uh, but the end result now is good, which is that the balance wheel is off the staff uh, with a good clean hole. I then set about to understand the replacement staff's part number, uh, and oh boy, I ran into unexpected complexity here. Problem number one is the Waltham model 1883 18S pocket watch has multiple staff variants assigned to the same part number, which is part number 1365. And the reason for this is that during the production run of the 1883, Waltham changed the engineering of the balance staff and the balance complete. And for whatever reason, uh, probably it made a number of things simpler in their inventory, who knows, uh, it kept the part number the same. It didn't change the part number. Problem number two is there was another part number, 1364 balance staff that had a wider waist. Um, that was used on uh, very early production runs of the 1883. Problem number three is the staff pivots can be anywhere from 0.12 millimeters to 0.14 millimeters depending on the production run. That is a size 12 to size 14. So during the production of this pocket watch, the balance staff part number changed and within the 1365 family, there were variants in the staffs used and in the pivot sizes all with the same part number. So Dave of daveswatchparts.com um, took this all in and he advised me that I really wanted to get the 1365 variant of the staff, just forget about the 1364. So I then had to ascertain the pivot size I needed uh, and then hunt for the replacement staff. For that, I used this vintage sights tool that I purchased on eBay. These are jewel gauges in 0.01 millimeter increments. That's one one hundredth of a millimeter. Here's what I found when I tested the upper and lower balance staff jewels. So this is 0.07 millimeters in diameter. Let's zoom up on it. That little prong there. And then, you know, the biggest one is this one. This bad boy is four tenths of a millimeter, 0 0.40. First, I'm going to do the balance cock jewel. And the challenge is that um, these jewels have an end cap, not ink a block, but it is an end cap. And of course, if the jewel gauge goes into the jewel hole, and it makes it all the way through because it's the right size, it will bump up against the end cap. And I'm just concerned that I may not have the uh, experience to know when a pivot gauge is, you know, bumping up against the end cap versus not going in at all. So just to be totally safe, I'm gonna take apart this assembly so that I can test the pivot gauges on the jewel gauge in isolation. And then I won't be fooled by the gauge bumping up against the end cap on the other side of the jewel. I will be right back. Okay, so I've popped the jewel assembly out of its, uh, out of its uh, hole. Let me zoom in all the way here so you can see this. Uh, now, you'll note that there are some defects here in the jewel. I don't know what they are. The jewel hole seems to be round, but there are these little funny marks and this has been through the cleaner, so I don't know what to say about that. Uh, I didn't want to take everything apart because, well, every time you touch something, you manipulate something, you unscrew something, there's the opportunity for something to get lost, something to get misplaced, something to get damaged. But you know what? I want to make sure I measure this pivot hole correctly. So, is that hole 0 0.12, 0 0.13, or 0 0.14 millimeters in diameter? So I'm going to start with 0.15. Now, how do I do this easily? Let me try, okay, I've never done this before. So one thing I could do is slide it over 
to one of these holes and I'll press downward and this may not work and I may have to actually hold it another pair of tweezers and you know okay I'm, I'm learning so yeah I can see I'm gonna to have to do that Now the other option is could I just hold this in my hand and the answer is yes so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna hold the I'm gonna hold this in my hand I'm gonna hold the jewel assembly very carefully in my tweezers and let's see if 0.15 goes in I don't like doing that either. How do I do this? I don't think that goes in. That does not go in. One five does not go in. One four. One four goes in. So 1.4 goes in, so that hole is 0.14, and so now the question is what do I do for side shake? Do I order a 0.13 pivot staff or do I go for 0.14? And I don't, I, don't, I don't feel side shake here, so I wonder if since 0.14 goes in, I should order a 0.13. I'm going to put this jewel in the parts tray and now just to be sure I want to test the plate which has the bottom jewel for the balance staff. Yep that goes in there too I can feel that. Okay I concluded the replacement staff should be a 1365 with 0.13 millimeter pivots. Some balance staff listings online don't give the pivot size, in which case you better ask the seller what the pivot size is before you make the purchase. Or they give the pivot sizes explicitly or using a kind of shorthand. It's not too hard to figure out if they list the pivot sizes in the title what they are. Mark offered to review videos of my test to confirm the sizes, which was super nice, um, but in a possibly stupid display of bravado, uh, I'm feeling confident of my measurements. Uh, so I purchased a 1365 with a 13 pivot from an eBay seller. We'll see what happens. After it arrives, I'll reassemble the balance complete. A bent pivot is a serious flaw, so I'm hoping the amplitude jumps way up and I can declare victory. Uh, but if it doesn't, I'll continue looking for the next culprit for the amplitude loss. And that's all I have for you today. Till next time, take care.